Our Lord and our Father, we are grateful to you for your mercies, which are new every morning. Thank you, Lord, for permitting us to be alive. I know that it's not because of our righteousness, but because of your mercy. You give us opportunities to put things right. You give us opportunities to fulfill the purpose of our existence. And this day is yet another opportunity you have given to each one of us to do what you sent us here on earth to do. And so, Lord, even as we meditate in your word, Lord, I pray that you will inspire us, that you will speak to us, and that, Lord, after everything is said and done, may the glory return to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Um, praise the Lord and good morning. Uh, I have been asked to share with us uh, a text of scripture from Second Chronicles chapter 26 uh, from verse 1 to verse 21 and the topic is managing divine lift. Managing divine lift. Lift, And I trust the Lord that in the next 20 or so minutes, the Lord will speak to each one of us. I read from Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1. Then the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father, Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Ella and restored it to Judah. After Amaziah rested with his, with his fathers. Verse 3, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jecoliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who, was instruct, who instructed him in the fear of the Lord. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath. Jebne and Ashdod. He, he then rebuilt towns near Ashdod and, and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabs who lived in Gur, in Gur Baal and against the Moanites. The Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. And his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt because he had become very powerful. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem and the corner gate and the valley gate and at the angle of the wall and he fortified them. He also built towers in the desert and dug many cisterns because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plain. He, he had people working his fields and his vineyards in, his, in the hills and in the fertile lands for he loved soil. Uzziah had a well-trained army ready to go out by divisions according to the numbers as mustered by Jael, the secretary, and Maseah, the officer, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the royal officials. Verse 12, the total number of family leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. Under their command, under their command was an army of, of 307,500 men trained for war, a powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of armor, 
boars and sling stones for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made machines designed for skillful men for use on the towers and on the corner defenses to shoot arrows and to hurl large stones. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped until he became powerful. Verse 16. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar. Azariah the priest was uh, with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed him. They confronted him and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. This is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you will not be honored by the Lord God. Uzziah, who was who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry while he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple. Leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead. So they hurled him they held him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord had afflicted him. Verse 21, King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous and excluded from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Managing divine lift. I think in a, in a simple way, to me that speaks about managing success. When success comes your way, how do you manage it? When tangible progress begins to happen in your life, what happens to your character? How do you keep character when progress is happening around you? It is very easy for people to, to be humble when they are in lack, when they don't have things that other people celebrate, when they don't have things around them that cause other people to speak well about them. But very few people can stay humble when success begins to happen. So this text of scripture is giving us an example of a man who failed to manage himself when success came his way. I pray that God will give you the grace to manage yourself when success comes your way. Because scripture is very clear about God's attitude to pride. Scripture is very clear about God's attitude to pride. Scripture says pride precedes downfall. Scripture says God resists the proud. Scripture says God opposes the proud. I pray that God will make you and I have the attitude of John the Baptist, who in his time was so celebrated, at some point people actually thought that he was the Messiah that had been promised because of the way God was working through him. People respected John the Baptist when he talked, the whole nation listened. But at some point, when they asked him, are you the one? And he said, no, I am not. There is someone coming after me whose sandals I am not even worthy to untie. 
He was a great man, but he remained humble before the Lord. At some point, when Jesus came to the scene, the disciples of John spoke to him and said, but now this man is taking your reputation. I mean, this man is taking your place. He's becoming more famous than you are. And many of us have problems when other people who we think are younger or who we think are less experienced than us are becoming more famous than us. Some of us can throw a tantrum. But listen to what John the Baptist said. He must increase and I must decrease. He must increase and I must decrease. May God help you never to forget that before him you are nothing. You are just dust. God is just merciful to give you breath. All the things that happen to you are simply manifestations of God's mercy and his grace. You deserve nothing. You are nothing before God. May God help you to maintain that attitude, if you really want your testimony to endure the test of time. When good things begin happening around you, it sets you on what we call a balloon journey. I, I, I usually tell my students about a balloon journey. You know what, what happens to a balloon? When you blow air in a balloon, it begins doing what? expanding. The more you blow air, it expands. And that's what happens when people begin to praise you. The, the, the more people begin to praise you, you continue expanding, expanding, not knowing that at some point you'll reach your elastic limit and you'll burst. May God deliver us from walking a balloon journey. Uzziah was 16 years when he became king. It is very interesting that your calling does not wait for you to chronologically mature. Your gift manifests before you actually mature. That is why you don't get anyone. Because you think they are gifted and give them a position, it will destroy them. You see, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. In Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4, the Bible says about Jeremiah that even before he was made in his mother's womb, the Lord did what? Set him apart to be a prophet. Your calling, you come with your calling. You come with your gifts and your talents. And you see, they are so visible. And many times human beings are deceived to think that your gifting is equal to your ability. And so they promote you very quickly. Yeah? Uzziah was promoted very quickly to become king. You know, in the, in the monarchy system, when, uh, when, when leadership is hereditary, they don't wait for you to do what? They don't, the moment your father dies, by default you become a king. I think you know, you know a man called... Uh, is, he, is, he, is his name King Kim Jong, Jong Un? I even mix up the name. The president of, of, of North Korea. You know? <laughs> By default, he was supposed to become the king. I mean, the, the, the president. By default. Because their system is such that leadership is what? Hereditary. But it does not have the character that goes with it. That is why he thinks the only way he can make his influence known. Yeah, is to show that he has the ability to set the world ablaze using nuclear weapons. Now, that's what happens when people have power but don't have the maturity that goes with it. And maturity is only attained in the presence of God. Maturity does not come because you are 40 or 50 or 60. I have met many people in their old age who behave like children. Uzziah was 16 when we became king. You could be 46 here and you've been given a position, but you don't have the character that matches with the position. A gift or a talent will open opportunities for you, but only character keeps you there. He was 16 when he became king. I just imagine a 16 year old of these days. A 16-year-old who is so familiar with WhatsApp, Facebook, the only book they know is Facebook. 16, and you make that one king. He became king at 16. 
He had been born in a family where the father and the mother walked with God and knew the Lord. Yes, they made their mistakes, but at least they modeled the Christian life to him. You see, the biggest problem we have is many of us are born in Christian families, but we have not taken on the Christian heritage. It is so shocking these days, the character that children who are born in Christian families manifest. We are so busy preaching to other people's children, we are not discipling our own. That was the problem David had, my friend. He was a man whose heart was after God. But you think about David's children. Think about Absalom. Absalom killed his brother, Amnon, and went ahead to conspire against his father, to take his father's throne. Amnon raped his sister, Tamar. Two of, Solomon, of, of David's sons, Solomon and Adonijah, eh, had a conflict over their father's throne. Adonijah ended up being killed by Solomon. The man was a great man in public, but a failure in his own house. You see, you could be great in your office, but a failure in your own home. May God help you. You see, whenever you look at these children, know that God has called them to serve his purposes in their generation. You begin preparing them right from the time they are in their womb, through their infancy. They are not just here to be a statistic. They have a mission. God never allows anyone to come on earth without a very clear divine mission. So you force them to do subjects they are not wired to do because you don't know what God has called them to do. Uzziah was 16. That's what the Bible says when he became king. And in the earlier years, he had a mentor. He had a mentor. You see, mentorship is very important. Had he had mentorship consistently, he would not have ended up the way he ended up. In his earlier years, he had a mentor who instructed him in the days of, in the ways of the Lord. And the Bible says, as long as he sought the Lord, God caused the progress to happen to him. You know, there are some people here who begin well, but to God is not how you begin, it is how you finish that matters to God. In Ecclesiastes, there is a scripture which says, the end of a matter is better than the beginning. Yes, he began well. He had mentorship. But you see, God is interested in consistency. He's not interested in what you did last week that made you eh, be in his presence. He's interested in what you continually do. That is why his name is I am, not I was. God is interested in what we do on a moment by moment basis. It is the things you do, your daily routine is what will determine how your life will end. You cannot be a part-timer in your work with God and expect to leave a godly legacy behind. As long as he sought the Lord. You see, it is very important, it is very interesting. The moment you draw close to God, the psalmist says that in the presence of God, there is what? There is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are what? There are pleasures forevermore. So the more you draw closer to God, the more you interface with his pleasures, the more you interface with the promotion, the more you interface with the progress, the more you interface with breakthroughs, the more you interface with, 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 with miracles, signs and wonders, because those are in his presence at his right hand, they are pleasures. Now, the biggest weakness we have, we have as human beings is to be consumed by the pleasures. We move our eyes from the Lord and put our eyes on the pleasures. So you see, when Uzziah sought the Lord, things began to happen. As king, he had military success. Yeah? His army was so solid yeah, that no other country or territory would dare attack. Yeah? He dealt with the Philistines squarely. 
And when you read scriptures, you'll find that among the key enemies Israel had, the Philistines stand out. But you see, the more you, 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 you look for God, the word to seek, which, comes, which is related to the word to search, is to look for something with determination. I don't know whether you've ever been in an experience, or just imagine it. Eh? You, are supposed to, you are supposed to fly to, to a certain country, and two hours before your flight, you realize you don't have your passport. I mean, you realize your, you don't have your passport. I just imagine the urgency with which you will begin to look for the passport. You will literally turn everything. You will even go to the toilet looking for the passport. You, you will not have time to reason. You, you, you want to find the passport with urgency. That is the kind of urgency with which God desires for us to look for him. That's why the Bible says seek him when he can still be what? When he can still be found. He passionately looked for the Lord. He was not looking for promotion. He was not looking for success. I'm sure those of you who have worked with the Lord, you remember a time when you, you didn't mind whether you had anything. All you had was you burnt with passion for the Lord. You loved the things of the Lord. I remember those days when we were still undergraduates at campus. You know, some of us, our shoes, you know, you would have a shoe with a hole, but you are not concerned. All that you have is a passion and a desire to know the Lord. You see the problem, when, when titles begin to happen, when titles begin to come around you, you begin to get conscious of titles. And especially people who study. I have been among the so-called intellectuals and I'm telling you, their pride stinks. I remember when I was doing my, my, my master's defense, my supervisor told me, now that the chairman of this panel you, make, you have to make sure you, 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 you speak to him in his title as a professor. Every time he asks a question, before you answer it, you have to say, prof, 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 prof. And I say, my God. <laughs> and so I tried to follow, I tried to follow the, the advice of my supervisor. Uh, God was merciful and I passed that, that defense. You see, but when I came out, I said, is, is, is that, I mean, is that what life is all about? That someone gets so puffed up with a title that if they are not addressed by their title, then they are offended. When titles came, and every time everyone was singing Uzziah, 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 <laughs> including some prophets like Isaiah. You see, that is why <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6 is written. It is when King Uzziah died that Isaiah saw the Lord. Uzziah had become so much an idol eh, that even the prophets of the time were no longer seeing God, they were seeing as Uzziah. That is how, that's the level to which his greatness had come. May God help you to be conscious of the way Satan can use success and progress when it comes your way. May we learn from the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to Philippians, even though he was very good, I like the way the King James Version puts it, even when he was very good, the Bible says he did not consider equality with God eh, anything to be grasped. Eh? But he denied the pleasures, the titles of heaven, he humbled himself. He took on the nature of a servant and he put on human flesh. And the Bible says he was obedient to death, even death on the cross. And the Bible says because of that, God has exalted him to the highest place. And he has given him a name, above every other name. And at, at that name, what will happen? Every knee, in not just the, every knee, not just here, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. For some of you, your influence ends here. But for Jesus, every knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth shall bow down, and every tongue shall.
shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. He says to us, come to me eh, eh, and learn from me. From what? For what? I am, I am what? Gentle. And I am humble in heart. And you'll find rest for your souls. Managing success when it comes. So, as I conclude, I think my time is gone. The Bible says, when Uzziah's name became popular, eh? when money was answering him, eh? when wealth had the label Uzziah everywhere, the Bible says his pride led to his destruction. Satan will use the, 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 the physical things that God give, gives you to bring you down. Satan used the same things God had put in the Garden of Eden, the pleasures God had put in the Garden of Eden to tempt Eve and Adam to bring them down. Watch out. The Bible says pride filled him because he had substance and honor around him. You remember Solomon, how he had substance and honor, and it caused him to become an idol worshiper and end up with 700 women and 300 concubines. That is abnormal. And the Bible says that Uzziah one day felt, he felt he could even do other things. He could be both a king and a priest. You see, that is, that is the arrogance that we have. We think when success comes, we think we can do everything. We think we are invincible. We think we are like the Lord Almighty. So he steps into a, an office which God did not call him. God called Uzziah to be a king. God did not call him to be a priest. The consecration of a king is different from the consecration of a priest. The consecration of a priest is so rigorous. That is why we have a whole book of Leviticus. You don't have a whole book talking about how kings are prepared, but we have a whole book in the Bible talking about how priests should be prepared, how they should live, how they should behave, and the consequences of their sin. So he was walking into an office he had not been prepared for. He was walking into a calling God had not called him for. The moment you step out of what God has called you, you are walking into leprosy. You see, that's why humility helps you. Being humble helps you to know your boundaries. You cannot do everything. God has not called you to be everything. He walked out of God's designated boundaries for him and he ended up in leprosy. And even when the priests tried to correct him, he had become so arrogant. I have heard of leaders in this country yeah, yeah, who arrogantly speak back at men of God to the extent that one of our leaders even slapped priests. May God have mercy upon him. God is just merciful. Otherwise, some of us would have, would have died a long time ago. But you see, you cannot take God's patience for granted. Herod thought he would stretch God. Eh? He caused people to begin worshiping him like God. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord slapped Herod and worms ate Herod while he was still alive. This is in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament. Some of you think that the God of the Old Testament is different. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's just patient. But don't stretch his patience. And so in summary, because of pride, Uzziah ended up leprous. He ended up leprous. You see, there are certain things that come in our lives as divine discipline. <laughs> there are certain things that come in our way. God allows them yeah, to, 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 to discipline us because God loves us so much to allow us to go to hell. 
Sometimes it can even be a sickness that God allows. You see, that's why the Bible says, you should not take lightly the Lord's chastisement because no father who loves a child will not discipline them. I used to fear being caned so much and it's what shaped me not to, to, uh, not to disturb teachers in class. And so the lesson I learned from there is I don't want to play with this God. Yeah? He's loving and he's merciful. But when he stretches his rod of discipline, you may not like it. Uzziah ends up leprous. A man who was so great, he ends up dying in quarantine. Do you know quarantine? He ends up dying in quarantine. The moment they realized he was leprous, they locked him away from the community. People who used to applaud him no longer talked about him. You see, that is why you need to be careful when progress comes. You see, because when the judgment of God comes, those who used to praise you eh, will even behave as if they even never had your name. That's why you should never be puffed up by the, praise of, by the praises of human beings. They will say, eh? they will say, hail the king. And in a few moments, they will say, crucify him. May God help us. May God give you grace to stay humble. Because you are nothing, even at the height of your success. Before God, you are just dust. And whatever you've achieved in this life does not matter to him. It doesn't impress him. Your degrees don't impress him. Your cars don't impress him. Your riches don't impress him. He looks at you. Eh? And the only thing he values in you is Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's what adds value to you before him. Without that, you are naked. You could surround yourself with all these properties like able, like like Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with the leaves, but they were still naked. May God help us, all of us, our Lord and our Father. Lord, you know our hearts. You know each one of us. You are looking at us and you know how pride has entered our hearts. And how pride is preparing for our destruction. But Lord, at the hearing of this word, we receive grace to humble ourselves. Have mercy upon us for the times we have concentrated on building our own names on feeling important at the expense of our relationship with you. Lord, we don't want to be humbled by divine discipline. We choose to receive grace, to humble ourselves. Help us to be like John the Baptist, who said he must increase and I must decrease. The Bible says that you give grace to the humble. And the Bible says that you dwell in a broken and contrite heart. And that the broken and contrite heart you don't despise. Help us. We can't do it ourselves. But help us to walk in humility. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.